Okay, so this is putting two ideas together from earlier videos that we've done. So what we've got here is that graphene based transfer fluid that I was chatting on about in a different video. And I've made up a heat pipe. Now these are standard heat pipes that you'd find in any solar installation. They're about 1.2 metres long. Uh, normally you put them into an evacuated tube and that's how they perform, just like what we were talking about on the heat pipe video that we've done. So I've made these two heat pipes. This one is filled with water. And that's going to be my comparison. And this one is filled with a thermal transfer fluid. Now, I've actually forgotten to hand this. It's a thermocouple. So I've sort of taken the thermocouple to the side, and it's reading the temperature at the moment at 15 degrees centigrade, which is our start temperature. So what I'm going to do is turn this heat gun on, and that heat gun will blow hot air across the bottom end of that tube. And what we're looking for is how quickly that heat will be transferred to there. So the plan is that every minute, record the temperature and see when we get that temperature going up, how long it actually takes. Though I've done that, because I want to actually get one of these, I'm going to cool this down to 15 degrees centigrade. I don't want to move it, because I want everything in the same relation. Cool this down to 15 degrees centigrade, move the thermocouple, run the experiment again. And what we should get is a nice comparison of how quickly this heats up with its uh, thermal transfer fluid compared to just ordinary water. So that's the plan and that's what I'm going to do. So I've got a watch over here that I'm going to start and then I'll turn the heat on and we'll get going with that. Okay, so I've turned it off. It took eight minutes to raise that to 55 degrees. Now what should happen is that as that continues to cycle through, that will get hot or stay hot and this will actually cool down at the bottom here. So we're reading 31 degrees centigrade at the bottom and still now 52 degrees centigrade at the top. So we've got quite a temperature difference. Now obviously the thing to do is run the whole thing again, but this time with this one. So I'll swap over the thermocouple and run it again. Okay, I tell you, this is really exciting. I'll, I'll put the results up so you can see them. Where at the moment, it took 10 minutes for it to get to the same temperature, whereas previously it took eight minutes to get to the same temperature. But actually, the temperature on the thermal fluid began to rise after about a minute or two. This one, it actually took about five minutes to get the temperature up. So after five minutes, the temperature started to rise about the same rate, really. And it's kind of what you'd expect, because this is obviously a thermal fluid. It's, it's nanocarbon. And most of the carbon is actually staying in the fluid. So what we're getting up here is water vapour. So we're getting the same kind of um, heat transfer, and it's what you'd expect from the water vapour. But this heated up so much more quickly. Like I say, about a minute or two this was heated up, five minutes this took the heat up. Once it got heated up and it was going, then because we've got this just sitting around in the air, we don't really have it heating anything or doing anything, it's just sitting there, we're not trying to put it into a heat sink to heat anything up, then this reached the same um, temperature as this, and you'd expect that. But it reached the same temperature much more slowly than this one did. So if we had a heat store around here and running this, what that means is we'd be able to heat up twice as much water than we could with this system without the thermal fluid in. So we can get a huge throughput of um, water in there that we couldn't get with that system. So really, really exciting. Now what I'm going to do is draw a graph for you with the results and just flash that graph up for a little bit so you can see it. So there you go. Now you know I'm kind of really excited by this. Because we've done, a, I think, a reasonable experiment. I mean, there's still things to do. I mean, we don't know, for instance, what the start temperature is for this working fluid. That'd be interesting to know, but really just interesting to know. This is going to start around about sort of 70 or 80 degrees, I would guess, given the level of vacuum. And we can get that in a solar cell, no problem at all. So it's not absolutely crucial to know, but it would be good to know what the start temperature is. And we know now how that actually performs in a situation in which you would actually want to run it. And I find that really, really interesting and really exciting. So I hope you do too. And um, thank you very much for watching.